Hello, and welcome to an overview of the Arkansas Teacher Residency Model. I am Andy Sullivan, Director of Licensure at the Arkansas Department of Education. Today on our video, we are going to uh, provide an overview of the residency model and discuss how it works, who can benefit from the model, and what individuals can be doing right now to be better prepared for when we implement the model in 2022 of fall. I'd like to begin today uh, with a, a bit of a, of a self-assessment. So uh, listen as I read these and think, does this or does this not apply to me in my pathway or my school or my district? So if I asked you right now, uh, do you have students in your district who want to be teachers? If the answer is yes, then the residency model is for them. And then if they need help paying for college, if they would like to stay close to home, or if they need to work while attending college, uh, the residency model, once again, a really good fit for them. The second question is, uh, do I have the ability to have get con earn concurrent credits uh, while I'm in high school? Uh, if the answer is yes, then you can already check that off your box. If no, I'm going to talk a little bit about that and make sure that you know to contact uh, to get that pre-educator pathway under underway. And do you have an Ed's Rising chapter at your high school? That is the student uh, organization, just like uh, Future Business Leaders of America or Future Farmers of America. We, there is a chapter for uh, would-be teachers, and we want to make sure that our students have access to that. My fourth question is, do you, are you, or do you know a paraprofessional who would make a great teacher but they can't afford to quit their job. If so, the residency model is going to be able to help you. And then finally, uh, are you a teacher or do you have teachers right now that have their master or lead designation? If you do, that is fantastic. Uh, if you do not have any lead or master designated teachers in your district, then we wanna uh, show you how to, you could improve and increase that work. So how do I get prep program candidates in front of students. Now, at no point in time, one of the questions we get often is, so you're letting 19-year-olds be teachers. Uh, we are not letting 19-year-olds be teachers. At no point in the residency model is a resident the teacher of record. Okay. They are in classrooms, just potentially just like paraprofessionals are now. Uh, but the, the really positive part is where when I was an undergrad, I might have taken a class on behavior, classroom management. And I was learning all these tricks and tips and, and theories around classroom management, but I wasn't in a classroom to test that, to try those out. And then to come back to my class, to my, my ed prep class, and talk about how it was going. The residency model is going to allow me to uh, attend a class, learn a theory, learn those tips and tricks and, and tools of, of, of teaching, and then practice those in a classroom in front of students with a highly skilled teacher in the room with me. And then I'm able to go and have those conversations and learn so that when I become a novice year one teacher, I won't feel like a novice year one teacher. So the residency model goal is uh, to increase the amount of time in front of students in some capacity. So you may be wondering, well, Andy, what kind of capacity can work? Here's the capacity. And in, in a perfect world, what, what we will see is that we have a candidate who graduates high school with their certified teaching credential. Those are nine hours of concurrent credits that are that your school or your district would uh, collaborate with uh, a two year or four year institution uh, to, to do. And then as a level one resident, what that means is I have my certified teaching assistant. I'm enrolled toward in, in, in an undergrad program, uh, a community college or a four year college, and I'm working in some capacity in a school setting. It does not have to be full time. It could be, a, you could be a bus driver, a cafeteria worker, custodian, paraprofessional, um, secretary, whatever you, you might, ask, might be. But the point is that you are in the school setting, learning some skills 
while you are earning that associates in arts and teaching. Once you uh, earn your associates of arts and teaching and are enrolled in a educator prep program, you can become a level two resident. What is a level two resident? Exactly what I said, someone who is in an ed prep program, has their associates of arts and teaching, and is working in a, uh, in a school. One of the questions, one of the uh, caveats with level two that separates you from your level one and level two residents is that during a level two, you are in a classroom. So maybe during your first two years, getting your undergrad, getting your uh, associates a degree, you have been in the cafeteria during that time. During level two, uh, the partnership, which is why it's so important that, that a school district says we support this. We now need that cafeteria worker to be placed into a classroom, not full-time necessarily. It could also continue to be part-time, but that, it, that this new role in your school is aligning with the content that they are learning in their ed prep program. So when I was in my ed prep program, fantastic program back in the day, still is, but I had a field experience. I am an elementary ed major. Uh, I was first through sixth grade at the time. And I was placed on my first field experience at ninth grade geometry in, uh, in a school district. And my job was to go and watch the teacher. Did I learn something? Maybe. Um, could I have learned more if I was in an opportunity to apply what I was learning in my ed prep program? Yes. And so that's what we want in our level two residency, that you are going, you're, the resident is going to, going to school, gain, increasing their knowledge. You want someone with that kind of knowledge in a classroom, in a, in a paraprofessional, a classified position of some kind. And the universities um, are, that have, have signed up, and, and those links are available as well, are able, he, this person is able to do those field experiences at your school in that classroom. So uh, kind of killing two birds with one stone. You get to keep my job and be in front of, of students, uh, cementing my knowledge and checking off the requirements of those field placements that normally would have required me to not work or take time off for my job uh, because I had to do it every Tuesday and Thursday from nine to noon. Uh, so that flexibility is once again coming in at level two. A level three resident is someone who is time for their student teaching or their internship. They have been a level two resident for a year and now they qualify for a level to be a level three resident as they inch or, or, or now ready really for graduation. Uh, we believe that this will help them once again with their experience, have them better prepared, and uh, uh, potentially help them pass their licensure exam uh, for, for licensure. Um, the key here is, this is where I asked earlier, do you have master and lead teachers? Well, all the way along the line, we would prefer the residents to be in a room with master and lead designated individuals. But in level three, it needs to happen. We want to make sure that our residents are getting their best experience from the most experienced, most highly qualified teachers available in your school district. And then um, what we would love is to see that a fully licensed teacher after level three, uh, that they are immersed in that school culture, on the, have on their job training, and ultimately are day one ready. So the overall residency model is all about student-facing work, the partnership between a district and a university uh, that ensures that flexibility is there so that the residents can continue to work and earn a living, and by the way, qualify for teacher retirement, which is fantastic. Our districts are not losing employees, so you're not having to go out and replace your paraprofessional that you love and does a great job for you because they're having to quit to go back to school. Another question we get asked often is, that sounds great, but how do we pay for this? So it, the AR Futures Grant is a very simple way to uh, pay for your first two years of college. So if you have someone who says, I'd love to go back to college, but I can't pay for it, whether that is a senior or a paraprofessional or someone who's not a paraprofessional, but could be 
and wants to be a teacher and you know them, AR Futures Grant is available uh, to anyone in the state of Arkansas. Uh, you see on the screen, the colleges that uh, participate in this, uh, they now offer this for education. It was recently added. It is for um, until you receive your Associates of Arts in Teaching or a total of five semesters, whichever comes first. And it fully pays for tuition and fees. And these colleges have signed on um, for that flexibility. It's because we wanna make sure that, that, that our individuals who are wanting to participate in this are able to and still work. So if you answered no to, I, uh, I need master of league designated teachers, uh, here are here they are. You see some of the qualifications for that. You may already have teachers in your building who qualify for this and they just don't know it. For example, if you have a National Board Certified Teacher, uh, they already qualify for their master designation. If you have someone with a master's degree with at least 18 hours in that content area, uh, they can take a micro-credential and have it added that way. And then, and then the lead designation is there. We'll uh, on the screen, you see the six folks who are here to help you as you navigate the system. So introduce you to Maria Touchstone. She is uh, here at the department, one of our program advisors, and she is all about answering general questions about the residency model and how to help candidates who would like to start that career. Bobette Ray is also program advisor here. She is oversees our, our career continuum, which, which includes master lead designations. If you are at a high school and you do not currently have a pre-educator pathway, those nine hours of concurrent credits to receive your certified teaching assistant while in high school, uh, that credential, Janet Perkins can help you get that started. Raven Harris is in charge of Educators Rising. And then Alicia Lewis is at the Arkansas Department of Higher Ed and can answer every question you ever had about a scholarship. And then if you're ever unsure what to ask, I'm here for that. Uh, feel free to reach out to me and say, Andy, I need help. I don't know what I'm doing. And finally, I'm gonna go back one to Let's Talk. So I'd like to close this way. Um, the residency model is a model. It's not a program. The goal of the department has been to uh, create a pathway of flexibility and collaboration between districts, higher education, and candidates who want to be teachers. So you don't enroll into the program because it's not a program. You determine how this model can best reflect. So for example, if I am a school district right now, and I think this sounds very appetizing to me, I know that I have two seniors who don't wanna go off to college somewhere. They enjoy their hometown and they wanna stay there and, and going off to school maybe right now isn't even financially feasible or um, somebody not ready for that. And I also have three paraprofessionals who I know would make a great teacher, but they can't quit their job either. What you might do as a district is say, is bring these people together and say, let's start a cohort. Let's get you on the path to being a teacher and reach out to that community college. Or if you're a community college out there right now, reach out to your local district and say, hey, I have, you know, community college A, I have five candidates who we want to help shepherd through this process. How can you make that flexible for us? Because they all want to need to work full time. And then you build that partnership. And then talk to that four-year college. We have candidates who are about to, who, who are getting ready to graduate with their associates of arts and teaching. When that happens, how can you make sure that, that there's the flexibility for them to continue in the residency model? And then when they uh, are ready for level three residency, do I have teachers who are ready to take them on those master and lead designated teachers? If not today, start identifying those teachers. How can we use funding to support them through that process? And then finally, when the residents graduate and they're ready for a job, they want to stay with you. And you're able to offer them a job long before anyone even knows they exist. And they already feel like they're a bobcat or a cougar or a panther or a you know, hornet bee, lollygagging, whatever you have out there. Um, 
they, they want to stay with you. They love their community. They're a part of that community and they want to stay a part of that community. So the residency model uh, goals are to break down the barriers that would prevent someone in the past from becoming a teacher. Typically, that is finances, flexibility, and time. And then how the department can help you help your candidates. And our, and our job is we want to help you stay connected. But once again, uh, here are, the, are our individuals here at the department who can help you. And if you ever have any questions, please reach out with them. And we look forward to talking to you about this soon.